Hi and welcome to the second in my series of mini lectures for Mice and Men. So mini lecture one was all about loneliness and today's mini lecture is going to be all about Curly's wife. Um, now if I start rushing today, because it's 1.30, that, that clock is wrong, uh, but it is 1.30 and at 2 o'clock Judge Rinder's on. Now I don't know if anyone else when you're on half term holidays, um, you get into a daytime program that you never knew existed because you're at school or work um, but this always happens to me and the other day I was watching telly and this program called Judge Rinder came on now at two o'clock every day you need to turn on ITV and watch this man he is hilarious so I'm trying to get this done before Judge Rinder he is my treat for the day for when I've done this so today is all about Curly's wife as you know, Curly's wife is a key character in the novel. There are um, mini lecture notes on the show B page. Um, the code was given out in the first mini lecture on loneliness. Um, so it's VNHJN if you haven't joined the show B uh, page yet. And you can have the notes that accompany this lecture. Um, so as I said before, either print them off um, before or afterwards. And as I've said, I, I would recommend that you do it before so that you can follow along with the notes because um, as I'm giving the lecture, I'm referring to my own notes. So I'm making sure that I'm saying the things um, and talking about the things that are on, on the notes page. Okay. Um, so Curly's wife is the only female on the ranch and it's clear that she is a character that is just not welcomed um, by the other men. You can actually read a bit more about that or hear a bit more about that in mini lecture one on loneliness um, where there is a section on Curly's wife if you want to um, have a bit more information about kind of that aspect of other people's reactions to her and how uh, kind of what her place is on the ranch. Um, she's someone who has sort of very little identity in the novel. Um, we don't even find out her name. Um, she's Curly's possession and we know that that's represented as well through the use of the possessive apostrophe in her name, Curly's wife. Um, and so there's a real kind of sadness in the fact that she doesn't have this identity, uh, she doesn't have even a name like a lot of the other characters do. Um, but that's kind of a very um, uh, important part in understanding the character of Curly's wife. She's seen as a troublemaker and a dangerous woman by the men on the ranch um, and we see her through their eyes for a lot of the novel. Um, you will need to make your own mind up about how you perceive Curly's wife. Um, if you're asked a question on Curly's wife, what you really need to avoid doing, and I've been marking um, literature exams this morning and there are a lot of people answering the question that we set on Curly's wife and there are a lot of people just writing down everything they know about Curly's wife when the actual question was how is Curly's wife important to the novel as a whole and so very few people were really addressing that question so you've got to make sure that if you're given a question on a particular character and you choose to answer that one that you actually answer the question okay you don't just put in everything about Curly's wife because you're not addressing um, the main argument. Um, so as I was saying, you need to make your own mind up really about how you perceive Curly's wife um, because that's going to be the real kind of crux of your argument. Um, you know, is she a tragic character longing for attention or is she dangerous and someone that should be avoided as most of the men on the ranch um, see. Whatever you decide, you need to be able to support your argument with evidence. It's quite important to note that we hear about Curly's wife before we meet her. This means we're not necessarily given um, a reliable opinion of her. Candy, in particular, um, makes several comments about Curly's wife, and it's him that kind of brings up the topic of Curly's wife in the first place. Um, page 30 and then on page 31 um, he says that he thinks Curly's married a tart and then um, he tells George to look her over and so we're initially given this kind of image and impression of Curly's wife that is based on 
the way she looks and the fact that he's encouraging George to gain an impression of her and make a judgment of her based on looking her over um, is something that seems quite unfair. The you know he they're only seeing her kind of on what's on the outside. None, none of them ever, none of the men on the ranch, particularly Candy, ever give her the opportunity to kind of um, uh, to lost my train of thought and I didn't even see a dog which is the usual reason uh, oh I'll have to start again sorry about that I think I was thinking about if I'd have enough time to make a cup of tea before Judge Rinder was on and I thought I could think about two things at once but I couldn't so I've written down actually what I was trying to say which was that None of the men on the ranch give Curly's wife the opportunity to show them what is beneath the flirtation and layers of makeup. That's what I was trying to get at. Sorry about that. Um, so, um, you know, it seems as if she's been judged before she even has any opportunity to uh, kind of present herself for who she really is um, and the sad fact is that she's never given that opportunity. On page 34 this is where we meet Curly's wife for the first time uh, when she says she's looking for Curly um, and Steinbeck gives us quite a detailed description of her appearance and so it's almost as if he's urging the reader to see Curly's wife um, in the same way as the men on the ranch see her. Um, and so, or, you know, at least to see her through their eyes. Um, it says, one of the quotations says, she had full rouged lips and wide spaced eyes, heavily made up, her fingernails were red. So, uh, students often really want to talk about the use of the colour red, which is obviously perfectly fine, and it's a good thing to focus on, but it's not enough just to say, um, oh, Curly's wife wears a lot of red because she's dangerous. You have to look a bit more into it. You need to look at kind of your, the associations of the colour red um, and kind of why Steinbeck has her in red or why Curly's wife um, would choose to wear red and this idea of gaining attention from the colour um, and that kind of thing. So by all means talk about the fact that she wears red and you know it is symbolic but don't just say oh, Curly's wife wears red because um, it's a dangerous colour. You need to say a bit more than that. George's reaction to Curly's wife gives a really clear indication of the effect that she has had on him. Um, he says, she's a rat trap if ever I've seen one. Um, and he clearly perceives her to be someone who is not to be trusted. And worse for George, he cannot trust Lenny not to do something stupid around her either. You know, um... He obviously is very aware of how Lenny behaved when they were in weed and the trouble that he almost caused with the girl in weed when Lenny was holding onto her dress and she obviously accused him of um, assaulting her. Um, and so he, George doesn't want a repeat of this and, and this is why he sees Curly's wife as someone who is quite dangerous um, because he not only mistrusts her but he... <laughs> he kind of mistrusts Lenny at the same time in that although he knows Lenny wouldn't purposely do something bad, he knows that Lenny doesn't always make the best choices. And so the combination of the two together is, as we've seen, catastrophic. Um, so his feeling of, of um, danger and telling Lenny to stay away from her is very much justified at the end of the novel. Um, due to the fact that Curly's wife is an outsider on the ranch, you know, she's the only female, uh, none of the men really speak to her, she is able to observe all the goings on, and so this does actually make her quite a perceptive character. When she goes into Crooks' room on page 87, she looks at Lenny, Candy, and Crooks, and she says to them, they left all the weak ones here. Um... So she clearly has an understanding of the fact that society in the 30s was not accommodating for people that were disabled or old or black or, like her, a woman. And so 
there's kind of the suggestion that she understands that she is part of that group of weak ones. So moving into the final points of my mini lecture now, as we are reaching the 10 minute mark. Um, so I'm going to finish by saying that Curly's wife is very much like most people in the 30s. She had a dream and her chances of achieving it were very slim. And this is kind of part of the bitterness that she has is that, um, you know, we see her saying to Lenny just before she dies, um, oh, I could have been in the pictures. Um, and she sort of talks with regret about um, this conversation she had with the man that was going to put her in movies. And um, it's page 100 where she tells Lenny about the dream. Um, and this is tragic in itself. You know, Lenny isn't really listening to her. But she uses his friendliness and vulnerability to allow herself to feel as if someone is paying her some attention. Um, when, you know, that it, that's not the case at all. Lenny is just there and um, and he's fo his focus is on whether George is going to be angry at him about the puppy that he killed. Page 104-105 is... Um, the description of Curly's wife once she's dead and it is worth going to those pages and I'm using this copy of the text um, and this is the copy that you have all been given um, free of charge so all the page references are for this version okay um, so as I said page 104 105 is the description of Curly's wife when she's dead um, it's the first time she's really described in a positive light and so it's kind of ultimately the tragedy of Curly's wife that it's only when she's dead that she actually has some attention. Her husband's seen in the same place as her and um, it, it, we're given this much more um, kind of uh, honest description of how she looks. And it says the ache for attention had disappeared from her face. Um, and there's a lot more detail that you can look at there, and um, so I would urge you to do that. This therefore concludes mini lecture two on Curly's wife. Um, I hope you found it useful. Please let me know if there are mini lectures that you would like next. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be me choosing the topics. Um, but if there is a particular topic, a character, or a theme that you're really struggling with, or you just find hard to write about, uh, let me know on email and I'll try and make a video for you. Look who came! Are you on the camera? Is that you? It's Lily. This is Lily. Say hello. Don't be naughty. Hello. Okay. <laughs>